Angelitos Negros, that would be great. Okay. In Spanish. From my city. Mm. My book, 17 points of all the other. You're not playing the records. Oh, I thought you were going to play the record. I, it's just what you sent me. Thank you.
All right. That was great. <laughs> Out of sync and everything, but hey, that was like the Grammy <laughs> Museum. Yes. 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 Hold on there. Oh, my. Hi, Joyce. Happy eclipse to you, too. <laughs> yes, happy eclipse. That's what the eclipse, it makes things out of sync, too. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Kat, how you doing, girl? I'm doing good. And uh, we didn't we didn't realize, but we apparently phoned in our color coordination. So <laughs> I know. We both got the memo. That's it. <laughs> So <clears throat> this is my guest, Stephanie Spruill, and um, she's had a fantastic career so far, <laughs> and I'm sure it's going to go on and on. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hey, God willing and the creek don't rise. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, wow. And you're, you're, she's, she's on a little vacation in Santa Barbara with her husband, yeah. so that's really nice. Um, wow, let's see. There's a, there's so much to talk about, and um, uh, let me let me just kind of start by asking you a, a kind of a broad, uh, general question. You, uh, when did you say your birthday was? <laughs> July the 9th. July the 9th. Okay, so you're not a Gemini. You could be. Um, um, <laughs> Um, so there's a, there's a very broad, um, uh, sorry, let me just grab my words here. Um, involvement for you. That's not the right word, but, uh, creating, you've created a lot of different things for yourself. Yeah. Uh, you're, you know, from anybody looking from the outside, you appear very strong and uh certain sure of yourself and you move ahead with with you know ideas that come up obviously to me obviously because um in my in my way i am like i get an idea if i like it i just i just start doing it and a lot of people actually have trouble doing that mm -hmm. uh and i'm sure you've you know, I'm sure you've run into friends saying, oh, how do you do this all or that kind of scene. So um, what I I just like to get your overall point of view for a minute of. Um, I'm just trying to form my question here, yeah. but uh, your overall point of view of your life, your career, what you're doing We'll get into details after, but just as a kind of a sitting back and looking at the expanse of what you've created and what you are creating, and obviously what the future is, how do you how do you view that? Do you do you view that in a particular way? Well, when you say view that in a particular way, I have to go back to from whence I came. Yeah. My mother, uh, my father. And them um, <clears throat> making an exodus from Alabama to Los Angeles and rearing nine children. Father go to work in the morning, mother's at home, but she was also an entrepreneur. Uh -huh. You know, so that's what I saw. My mother taking care of nine kids, daddy going to work, cooking dinner. You know, she was an income tax consultant, notary public, and she was also a community activist where she received a declaration from the city of Los Angeles for her tireless work as a community activist and being a registrar, you know, registering over 65,000 people to vote and yeah. particularly. African Americans to vote. And she had me out there. So I always had an entrepreneurial sense because of seeing my mother turn the dining room into an office. Yeah. So and I I believe in when the opportunity comes, you know, open the door and check it out and see if it fits. But starting in school, you know, in orchestra, I I have a sense I'm a team player, you know, together everyone achieves more. Um, I learned that being a background singer, a lead singer a teacher, an entrepreneur, an author, and the founder of Sproul House Music School of Voice and Artist Development, it uses all the same skills. 
Right. So I'm driven um, and I'm also focused. And that's my second principle. My first principle is confidence, which I have. And I believe don't leave home without it. Right. Yeah. It's focused. So I kind of compartmentalize. My school is here. My lead singing is here. My background singing, which bought me my house, you know, and, and uh, took care of my all of the uh, how I say projects that I wanted to venture into. It was wonderful working with all the stars and, and artists and from David Bowie to Donna Summer to, you know, to Michael Jackson, to Julio Iglesias, which being with Julio gave me the international sense. But my father also spoke, you know, Spanish. You know, we, I would little tidbits of every language in the house. I said, Big Daddy, can I do this? He said, nine. I said, what is he speaking? German, I said, can I do this at sea? Okay, so I have an affinity for languages also. So it's just the way my mind works, um, taking on different projects. And I like to see them to um, the from the inception to the end. That's what I believe in completion, right? And so that's why in my school, I teach you how to not only sing and act and you know how to be the best you could possibly be, I also teach you how to establish a solid business plan for your life because that's what I had to do and that's what I did. So I I hope I answered that little Yeah. You did. <laughs> you did. Um <coughs> Yeah. So um nine I mean nine kids that's a lot. Yes, where, were you, where were you in the, in um, the number three? There's six boys and um, oh. <laughs> girls. Uh, that's yeah. a lot. And it was a musical family because my father played trumpet, my mother played piano, and she thought she could sing, but she had this real high voice. I guess I got that color tour voice from her. But we used to have like a little chamber orchestra. You know, my brother played viola, my sister played violin, I played cello, my other brother, LA, played uh, piano. Um, Bonky played trumpet, but he wasn't serious about it. But, and we all sang and danced. So it was a cheerful upbringing, you yeah. know? Yeah. yeah, and we got our butts whooped, yeah, when we were <laughs> what we were supposed to do, yeah. But my mother believed in uh, discipline. Yeah. And so I was raised very disciplined and raised in the church, mm -hmm. you know, um, community Lutheran church that had a lot to do with honing in my singing skills because I was in the choir so I hey yeah nine children a lot <laughs> I couldn't do it I only have the one I don't know how she did it <laughs> <laughs> but I think also in those days um you know and those days are not that far away but when I look at my stepchildren raising their kids and my nieces you know I don't, we didn't grow up like that. My, our mother said, go play, come home for dinner. There you go. She didn't like take us every hour to something, you it's, know. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Like the kids can't, I believe, can't be children now, but it's yeah. different. You know, you could leave your front door open, you yeah. could be yeah. unlocked. But my mother said, okay, be home before the, the, the lights come on, right? Yeah. Yeah. And there were nine of us. So my mother would stand on the front porch and say, Bonky, Jimmy, Stephanie, <laughs> Jimmy, Lyle, Daryl, Carter, Elliot, Elliot. Oh. They said, there go the squirrels. And we come running like a pack of little ducks. <laughs> you know, because we had to be home before the lights come, but she would stand on the porch and do that. And so I would hear that <laughs> bah, 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 with her high voice. So that's, I guess that's why I'm a soprano today. <laughs> <laughs> that's so cute, man. <laughs> yes, yes, that's great. Yeah. It was so, a wonderful <clears throat> family. Um, okay. So, and, and you played cello. Did you continue that at all? You know, I did, um, when I was with Glenn Campbell, you know, my, in fact, I started with, uh, when I got a scholarship in music to the Eddie Cantor Foundation of Creative Talent, I was in the Young Saints at that time. And the Young Saints, my first big gig was in Las Vegas with Danny Kaye. Huh. So my first mentor was Danny Kaye. I'm, oh. I'm gonna tell you 
with this little story, child. I know we have two hours, so we're going to kill this time. <laughs> <laughs> I just admire Danny Kay, right? He's such a hooker. He was a, just a multi-talented, wonderful human being. Yeah. We were in the airport. Now, you have to remember, I'm like 16, going on the road, 17. Yeah. Like 17, yeah. And um, the first big gig was um, the Ed Sullivan Show. And then um, Las Vegas, which it was called the Hilton, was Kirk Accorian owned the Hilton at that time. So it was the, you know, Las Vegas International Hotel. And then the Hiltons bought it. So it was the International Hotel anyway. So I'm in the airport and my poor little brief suitcase was falling apart. <laughs> and I had Jaffer's paper around. This is my first thing. I didn't have any money. You know, that whole nine, y'all. I was broke, okay? <laughs> broke. And- um worse than broke. Yeah, I was broke. <laughs> he came to me, said, Stephanie, let me teach you how to pack your clothes. <clears throat> because when the stuff fell out, it just fell out everywhere, all over the place. <laughs> So he told me, so Stephanie, you take this garment and you roll it up really taut and you stick it in the corner and then you take the next one and roll it up really tightly and put it in. And then you could get everything that's on the floor in the airport. It will be in your luggage really neatly. And that's how I pack to this very day. Danny K taught me how to pack. <laughs> taught me how to in, in, um, engage that. Uh, audience because he was amazing yeah. and it's funny because this is um total eclipse of the moon or the sun today and at that time there was the walk on the moon oh. and we were backstage they said oh my god he's getting ready to get off and walk on the moon everybody the young saints was a performing arts school and we had uh, evelyn and tommy freeman they were amazing amazing artists themselves and that's why I have my school today because of Evelyn and Tommy Freeman uh -huh. from the Young Saints. So, and I stayed back so I could see what is his name Armstrong yeah. to the moon. Yeah. So they said, Stephanie, get on, we get ready to go on stage. And I ran and got on stage. But I <laughs> saw that today, the total eclipse of the moon. <laughs> and then uh, I'm talking about my gig with Danny Kay at the International <laughs> Hotel when I saw Armstrong, uh, you know, walk on the moon. <laughs> but so it did, was you play cello for oh, did you play cello with Danny Kay? No, I sang and oh. danced. But cello, uh, to say, I, I kind of, went back in time however the only time i started playing cello again here's another great story um because i played from fourth grade to 12th grade right yeah and then i started immediately started performing I, i've been blessed to be able to perform ever after high school with the young saints and then it was on because they taught us how to be uh team players how to do background how to solfeggio all these things in order to do tvs and at that time there were a lot of variety shows you know going on yeah. so we were also guest artists on there but we were in vegas and i think i was with uh glenn or was it i was with nancy sinatra at that time uh -huh. and um there was this at that time they used to big live orchestras was the background so um, there was this guy who was the cellist in the orchestra. His name was Jaime Gold. And I'm so fascinated with that instrument because it taught me everything I know about music, playing the cello. And um, I said, you know, I would love to start playing the cello again. He says, you know, I can give you lessons. When we get back to LA, I'll give you lessons. Now I started playing the cello, um, studying with him. Now I get this gig, I'm going to A&M Records to do a, um, I think it was either Carol King, or no, David T. Walker. And um, this is the beginning of my background singing extravaganza. <laughs> um, he, uh, Lou Adler, I'm singing, you know, stand in front of that mic, but I'm singing, right? Blah, 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 blah. And he says, I love her energy. I love her look, you know, she would be great with David T. Walker. So I get a call from David T. Walker. Hey, baby girl, what you doing? You know, he's one of the best guitar players. You know, David T. Walker. Yeah. Yes. Anyway, so I said, um, he says, I'm, I want to audition you. Where do you live? Okay. He came over with his guitar, his Gibson. 
And he started playing some, of course, my go-to song was Summertime. I sang my heart out in my living room, ah, right? And then he said, do you play an instrument? And I said, yeah, I play the cello. He said, oh no, baby girl, we're not gonna use it. And at that time I was studying with Jaime and I had my cello in the kitchen because the place I was staying was very small, okay, <laughs> very small. <laughs> so, um, but I still had my hustle on, you know what I mean? It wasn't about my digs. It was about what was inside of me to yeah. bring forth, you know, yeah. to the world. He said, you're great. Let's do this. And the rest is history. Lou Adler started calling me for all the sessions, you know, to start making up backgrounds. You know, Stephanie, I love your ear. You know, I love what you hear. Harken back to my cello. Yeah. I can make up backgrounds like that. Yeah. From like um be be pay to toot, um, all of Donna Summers, you know, bad girls, you know, I just want to stop Gino Benelli. I made up those, you know, I just wanna stop. I made up those backgrounds for I just wanna stop uh for Gino Benelli. Um uh flash dance, uh that record, and I got a um, four-time Grammy award winning participant for the songs Pasta, Flash Dance working oh, nine yeah. to five, you know, nine to five, yeah. I will survive. I was on all of those major iconic hits. Oh. So all of that harkens back to my cello, right? And yeah. then going to my percussion. When David T. Walker, do you play an instrument? I said, for cello. he said, no, do you play anything else? Can you play a tambourine? I said, yeah, Harvey Mason, who was in the band that I was singing in, uh, the reason why, you know, with Jerry Peters, all these incredible yeah. Jim Bullstrap was singing with me. And it was amazing. Lonnie Groves, it was amazing. So we toured the country, you know, opening up for um, Mr. Iceman. Who was that? Uh, the Iceman. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> so I started playing tambourine, you know, for David T. Walker. And then the Mizell brothers saw me performing on stage, singing and playing the tambourine. And then they started having me um, do the tambourine on all of Donald Byrd, you know, stepping into tomorrow. Um, a lot of major, major hits from Donald Byrd. And so it just word of mouth, people said, you know, David T. Walker took me to Motown. So everybody thought at Motown, I was a, um, what is it? I was a, uh, just a tambourine sing player. They didn't know I was a singer. So I had all the top <clears throat> artists, Dinah Ross, you know, all of uh, Whitfield, all his records and Norman Whitfield. And, playing tambourine. Yeah, playing tambourine. And then I would do, you know, like, um, sweet, 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 sweet. Love Hangover for Dinah Ross. That's when I, I sang, did her backgrounds. And for Michael Jackson and the Jackson 5, I played... Um, tambourine and the guy's name was jerry butler the ice oh, yeah. yeah we yeah. opened up for jerry butler right, so. Right, right, right. yeah so um so i i just compartmentalized my gifts yeah which were many yeah and i just knew how to place them my tambourine playing my singing my arranging for backgrounds you know, on so many records, Irene Cara, Gloria Gaynor, Placido Domingo, Neil Diamond, Jeff Lorber. Um, like I said, Glenn Campbell, I was a rhinestone cowgirl. You know, Ricky Martin, La Vida Loca, Elton John. Oh, I have such an incredible story about Elton John. When I was with um, the Talking Heads uh -huh. on this major tour in um, New Zealand, and um, Australia, and in Australia, we had four days off. Now, I'm in, um, in the hotel room, which was a Siebel townhouse, right? And I'm doing my leg exercise, looking at TV, and they said, oh, Elton John hasn't been here in 10 years. He's going to be here at the Siebel townhouse. And, and, you know, Sydney, Australia, in those days, they could tell you where to stand. They didn't have the nuts that they have now. <laughs> they can't tell you anything. You know, I'm here, just show up, right? <laughs> so I said, I know Elton because I play tambourine on several of his albums prior. So um, I said, I'm going to call his suite because we're staying at the same 
hotel. So I called his valet. I said, yes, Elton John, please. He picked up the phone, not Elton, but the valet. He said, oh, when he arrives, I will give him your call. 20 minutes later, ring, hello. Hello, old girl, how you doing? And I said, Elton, he said, yeah, you bring your tambourines with you? <laughs> and I said, no, he says, okay, meet me downstairs. We're gonna go look for some tambourines because I want you to be on my next album that I'm recording here oh. in Australia. He picked me up in his incredible Rolls Royce limo <laughs> and we went around Sydney, Australia, looking for tambourines for me to play on his um, album, his platinum album that I did. <laughs> I mean, that's how things happen for me. Yeah. They come up and I jump in with all fours, baby. Yeah, and yeah. I show up and show out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I have so many great stories and wow, so many things that I've done, you know, and John Lucian, wow. The song that uh, me and Jeff Lorber, you know, I love Jeff Lorber. We used to do a lot of writing back in the day. And we wrote two incredible, a lot of songs, but these two songs, Sweet Control, which I'm going to release, um, uh, re-release on my album, do a video of it, of me. Um, John Lucian um, recorded Sweet Control and Nothing Lasts Forever, two of my songs, which put him back on the map. And really? he started number 38 on the jazz chart. So that really rejuvenated his career. I mean, I just loved John Lucian. Yeah, uh, yeah, he was wonderful. Was he one of boom, 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 yeah. boom, 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 boom. <laughs> you know, His voice was, oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah, 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 he was really beautiful. Yeah, yeah, beautiful, yeah. beautiful man, beautiful. Became really good friends. And we also wrote together for some of his albums after he loved the song. Oh. That I wrote for, um, oh, cool. Very nice. Yeah. And for Najee, I wrote, I'll be uh, good to you. I'll be there for you. Um, for Najee's Tokyo Blue album, that became a hit um, oh. for Najee. So oh. that's the jazz side, you know, because I love jazz. And in the Sproul household, every day was a jazz day. Oh. Um, because my mother and father played jazz every day. Yeah. My life. Yeah. So that's what I adore jazz. So go ahead and ask me some questions, girl. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I'm not sure where to get in here. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Um, I did have a question. Well, <clears throat> I mean, this is kind of an obvious answer, but still, it would be nice to hear your point of view on it um, regarding how important, I mean, it's it sounds like, and really, I've talked to like, many hundreds of people and you know people always basically say the same thing but it's a different you know slightly different point of view because of who you are but how how important do you feel is a personal relationship like being yourself with these with these people who can give you things and bring you things and also and skill i mean those i you know everybody says both you know, plus the, you're there, you're outside, you're moving forward, you, you were in the uh, hotel room doing your exercises and saw the commercial, you know what I mean? <clears throat> so those kind of three things people always talk about, and it's great, it's wonderful. So how important uh, do you, do you, well, obviously it's important, um, can you reiterate for me or <clears throat> give me your point of view on how important those things are, you know, to be yourself and to have your, have your uh, skill together too? Yes. Um, like I say in my book, my mother had a lot of it. Confidence. Yeah. And I say, don't leave home without it. <laughs> right. And if you're not feeling confident on any given day, fake it till you make it. No. In fact, fake it until you are it. Yeah. You know, I, I I don't have the fear because I believe I have the skills and the personality to show up and show out. You see, yeah, however, you have to hone in on your skills. What you don't have, study. That's why I have a lot of people who are major stars. They come to me, you know, to learn certain uh, techniques 
and how to address audiences. So I think confidence has a lot to do with it. That's for me, you know, um, rising to the occasion with, with the technique and skills that you need in order to come forth with believing in yourself. Oh, that's a big one. Oh my goodness, because that fear will come in to any and everybody. And the word acronym for fear, fear, I changed that, you know, because fear is a dark room where negatives are developed. And I changed that. F stands for forgiveness. You got to forgive yourself for buying into it. E is for enlightenment, like you're being enlightened about me, you know, enlightened, whether it's a spiritual enlightenment, which I, I know who I am and whose I am. Okay. A is for, like I said, the almighty. And also R is respect. You have to respect yourself because this business is a little tricky, especially for women. We have to really keep our dignity. We have to take care of ourselves, look the part, you know, and and have boundaries. You know, don't believe the hype. See, one thing I didn't know, I didn't know there was a big game when I got in the industry. I yeah. was Stephanie, I was gonna be myself. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah. I'm being myself, not knowing there's a game to play. Yeah. I didn't yeah. play it because I didn't know there was a game to play. That's yeah. what saved me. Yeah. That's what saved me, Kathy. I'm gonna be honest because you know most people try to play the game and they're not here today. And I've been in this business over 50 years. Yes. So God is good. I so have it to God be the glory. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Um, I have a friend uh, in, in, on Facebook, and um, <laughs> he's he's a Zappa fran- fan. Have you played with Zappa? Oh wow, that's funny. George Duke asked me to play with Frank Zappa back in the day. Yeah. However. When I was with Yazawa Ekaji, he's one of the big stars from Japan, you know, Yazawa. And he said, Dad, you'll be this, you know, it's psycho, psycho. Anyway, his son yeah. was on the road because uh, Yazawa was a big fan of Frank Zappa. So I toured with Frank Zappa's wife and his two sons. Oh. Yeah. So they were in, we were all in Japan together. But I no, I didn't work with Frank Zappa, and he I loved him. He was unique, man. Yeah, yeah. he's a genius, genius. Definitely. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Okay, heard- Roland. There you go. There's the answer, <laughs> Roland. He he asks out of all my guests. <laughs> he's a Zappa fan. Oh yeah, so, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, let's listen to another song. Um, let's see. I'm over from the record, not live. Well, I have, I mean, we have, um, oh, and we, so let's get into this. Let's see the sisters video because we haven't talked about your acting, right? No. Okay. Well, let's watch this and then we'll okay. talk. It's a, it's a short. Word. Very short. Yeah. So here, here you go, everybody. <clears throat> Jeremiah said he was going to call and confirm. Mm-hmm. Uh, you do not know if it's him. And anyway, you don't want to sound so desperate. Have a little mystery about yourself, Chef. That's right. Mystery is always good. <laughs> Hi, Elia. It's me, Jeremiah. <laughs> I just wanted to call and say I'm looking forward to our date tomorrow night. Oh, wow. That was, that was really short. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Like, it's short is short. But, but that's a, a sitcom that Maddie Carruthers, who's a producer, writer, director, amazing lady, great friend of mine. She chose me as Lena, as one of the sisters in me. And there's yeah. Elliot English and Tian. Uh, and so we are just like, I'm the oldest sister and I'm international. She kind of wrote when she wrote it, I don't know if she had me in mind, <laughs> but it showed I was able to speak my Spanish. You know, that's my second language and I have an album in Spanish. Oh. Um, a lot of wonderful, wonderful things that I did in that I was able to dance, sing, sing a little in Spanish and do my acting. So I love, love to act. I love it. Um, because of my background singing and I used to do four and five sessions a day. 
five days a week. And I was the vocal contractor, you know, like Billy Idol, Moni Moni, you know, like I said, Gina Vanelli, all of them, Ringle Star, you know, um, Olivia Newton John toured the world with Olivia Newton John. Um, and Little Feet, I was a Dixie Chicken. Oh, really? Yeah, with Bonnie Bramlett, my girl. Oh. Yeah, we were the, and Gloria Jones, we were the Dixie Chickens. Oh, my God. Yeah, so I go all the way back. Yeah. Uh, to Donald Byrd, like I said, Jeff Lorber, and uh, Neil Diamond, and and Brenda Russell, great friend of mine. But, yeah. you know, um, and the Weather Girls, of course. Yeah. It's Rainy Men. I did the original. Bob Estee called me to do the original vocals on that. Oh, wow. I was also a ghost singer for a lot of yeah. people. And I would do their demos, and then they would do it. But I, Bob Estee and Paul Jabara, loved it so much that they kept my voice on there, you know, along with um, Martha Wash and all the backgrounds and a lot of obligados in there. But Martha Wash, she's phenomenal. But I'm blessed to be in the mix with Miss Martha Wash. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. the other girls. Yeah, so many. Cannonball Adderley. I did the little big man with Cannonball Adderley. What did you fact, do with him? He taught me, this is deep. Cannonball Adderley, back in the day. Yeah. Uh, Fantasy Records, uh -huh. <laughs> Orange Keep News recording studio in um, so in San Francisco, I think it was our Oakland, yeah. uh, called me to do this record. And um, Robert Guillaume was on it. So many incredible wow. artists was on that record. But Cannonball wanted me to sing um, You're So Vain. Huh. And you know what she said? Have you seen the total eclipse of the moon? This is of the sun. That was in the song. So when I first sang it, you know, you know, and so I did it, Cannonball said, that's great, but I need to talk to you. So he called me and he says, uh, can you come to my room? And at that time, I'd never been to a superstar's room and a jazz man's room. I don't know what to expect in a room. So, but I went. I, I, I um, trusted my gut, went there, come on in. So he said, now stand there and sing the song for me. And I sing it, he says, have you ever seen a total eclipse of the sun? I said, no. He says, have you ever, do you know what a cavat is? And I thought it was a cavat that you put around, you know, he said, it's a cavat, you know, <laughs> it came cavat. And he was showing me all these things because when I was singing the song, I sang my heart out. But what I learned from him, he says, Stefan is all about the intention of the song. He says, have you ever been on a private jet? And I said, no. And he says, you know, uh, Carly Simon is from Simon and Schuster. She was raised as a multimillionaire. She was raised having dinner with um, Ella Fitzgerald sitting at the table, Einstein sitting at the table, this one and that one. So mm -hmm. the things that she wrote about, you're so vain, had a lot of, to do with her experiences of being, you know, very bon vivant, yeah. first class. So when he told me, I said, no, I'm just a sister from Compton. You know what I mean? <laughs> I don't know, yeah, straight out of Compton. What's so you? <laughs> and, <clears throat> he says, Stephanie, it's all about the intention of the song. So he explained everything to me. He explains Carly Simon, her gifts and her, her privilege. He explained the total eclipse of a sun. He explained being on a private jet. He explained the cavat, everything. And so when I went in there, I sang my heart out on that song. He said, that's what I'm talking about. And then Oren Keepnews ended up putting it on his album, the oh. same track that I did for Cannibal Adderley. So I learned so much from each and everybody I was with and had the opportunity and blessed to be side by side because God put me side by side with them. It wasn't yeah. like I was viewing them <clears throat> because they asked me, you know, they talked to me like I was one of them. So I had no fear. Yeah, yeah. I had no fear of being around superstars. Yeah. <laughs> I was just, I was taking a look to see if I could, it, uh, <clears throat> to 
I was wondering if, oh, so this was a Cannonball Adderley record called Soul of the Bible. Is that correct? Yep. Wow. Okay. And you guys can get it on, <laughs> you can get that on uh, Amazon. Wow. Interesting, huh? Very, very interesting. Very interesting. I just, you know, that's why it led me being around people like Jimmy Smith, because I played percussion on Jimmy Smith and Johnny Hammond Smith and, and Cannonball and, and uh, Quincy Jones. I worked with Q. Um, all these major, major jazz icons. Yeah. I, that's why I wanted to do my jazz album, which was called it's A Jazz Day. So I was blessed to have people like Patrice Russian and Brenda Russell and Michael O'Neill and Pee Wee and Michiko Hill and Manyango and Stacey Lamont Sidnor and Russ uh, Miller and all the best players, you know, that you know I produce. So I I'm used to being around the best player. I'm one of the best players. Huh. So if you can, like my mother said, why can't I play with her? Why can't I play? They're not of your elk. My mother would say that. I'm not of my elk. What are you talking about? She <laughs> said, honey, I want you to be around the people who you can rise up. I want some, you be around people that know more than you. Yeah. So that's, yeah. Yeah. I <laughs> just can learn from I, Strangely, I've been bumping into Michael O'Neill lately. I saw him last night. Oh, uh, that's my buddy. Oh, yeah. my I love buddy. him. He's yeah. an outstanding oh. person and blanker. Outstanding. And you know, I did a tribute to <laughs> Thelonious Monk and the song Round About Midnight. And Michael O'Neill blessed me on Around About Midnight. And um, as time goes by, he played the guitar on my album, It's a Jazz Day. And you guys can get it on Amazon also. Okay. <laughs> we might just hear a little bit. I found on Amazon Music... Uh, I wonder if I can hear this. Maybe I can't. <clears throat> I'm just going to, well, space spiritual. I, I kind of oversang that one. I think so hard. But well, that, that's okay, because I don't think I can actually play it anyway. Okay, I, I yeah. wanted to play but a it little was bit. Great. It was great. It was great. I sang my heart out. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> what other songs do you have of mine? Do you have Round About Midnight? Do you have Gingery? You Let's have... see. Um, I'm gonna. I'm gonna look. Nothing last night. Uh, <clears throat> I'll look. My well, last night we went to. We all went to see uh, John Schofield. Uh, okay. Over and uh, and Michael, I think was it Michael? Yeah, he he had been playing at Vibrato's and he ran over to catch the last act. Oh, awesome! Um, yeah. And, yeah, I just played Vibrato's two weeks ago. Sold out. So standing ovations. It was wonderful. And I had an incredible aggregation band because usually I have Michiko and Pee Wee Hill with their out with their daughter now touring with her, who is Judith Hill. Uh -huh. Oh, but yeah. And uh, my band consisted of um, on keys. Uh, oh, God. Wayne Lindsay. He was my musical director. So it was wonderful. And Buddy Nuanez, who played with... Uh, yeah, see yeah, you know, buddy. Yes, yes. And um, wow, I haven't heard about him for a long time. Yeah, but he's been playing in my band for the past 10, oh. 15 years. Oh, wow. Yes, buddy Nuanez. He's still great. He's wonderful. And, yeah. and Robert Kyle was on sax. And I had oh. a professor out of, uh, out of Cal State, LA, um, Dr. Ford. Uh huh. Um, because Nolan Shahid usually plays oh trumpet for me yeah yeah so I know Dr. Ford too because I was teaching at Cal State LA okay while he was while he was there and uh yeah so we had a good long professional relationship wonderful he's wonderful he played his heart out we had a great time cool yes yes and my girl Nico and Ashley Lowe on backgrounds so it was yeah. a big aggregation and it was, we killed it we killed it <laughs> yeah i've seen that uh the uh, japanese uh pianist that you you use right <clears throat> the woman ichiko 
Yeah, I've seen her somewhere play live somewhere, and I can't remember where. Okay. Um, well, I mean, I brought you up on Spotify. There's a lot of just regular music. There's a few more videos. Actually, we should look at your... <clears throat> Um, let's look at the, that's, that's good enough. Yes. Play that. Do you want to tell that's, us a little bit about this yeah, first? That's good enough. This is a song that I wrote during COVID. You know, we couldn't go outside. We couldn't go, you know, you had to uh, ration your toilet paper. It was crazy during that time. You know? <laughs> <laughs> However, I said, I'm going to be creative. So I went in my studio and my Pro Tools and I wrote the song uh, that's good enough. Cause I said, I'm here, I'm still alive. Cause a lot of us left during that time. A lot of musicians that I knew passed over. And I said, Lord, what I'm doing right now is good enough. And that's how I feel. What I'm doing is good enough. Cool. All right, here it is. Yeah, it's more like organic, like we're doing a lot, you know, like. That's good. 
That's more than good enough for me, beautiful okay, lady. That's what I'm talking about. By Nora Pardiso. Yeah. yeah. Um, let's see. Who do you, well, I'm sure there's several. Who do you think are several of the most outstanding artists you've ever known? Well, I've met, <clears throat> like I said, I've met so many. Yeah around and worked for like Nancy Wilson, one of my favorite, and I did her album and oh my goodness, to be with her and her presence, you know, first time I heard about a Aurora Borealis was on one of her albums, you know, <laughs> Sarah Vaughn, met her, um, Aretha Franklin, I worked on her record, you know, um, well, let's say, let's kind of qualify it a little bit. How about people who were not only outstanding talents, but also outstanding humans who had oh. in their life in control. Olivia Newton-John is one of them. She was a sweetheart. She took, like, took me under her wing because I'm an artist as well. When I sang background for her, Tom Scott hired me and we uh -huh were the opening act and also we did her show because he was the musical director for Olivia Newton-John. It was the Let's Get Physical tour. Okay. And um, I would come on and sing the song that I had on Tom Scott's album. And then I would sing with her. So being out front, uh, opening up for her, I could hear if the sound was bouncing off the walls because she played arenas and filled each and every one of them. Okay. Yeah. They yeah. loved her all over the world. Uh -huh. So um, I took it upon myself. Like I said, I had no fear because I looked at them like they're part of me. Yeah, yeah. So I went up to Olivia, you know, knocked on her door and the, the security let me in because she had to have FBI security because people are crazy out there. Um, and uh, went in there and I said, you know, the sound is like swirling around. So don't be frightened by it. And she heard that and she came to me and said, Stephanie, after every show on this tour, I want you to come to my room and tell me how the sound is. So we became friends huh. from that because I stuck, I stepped out on faith. Yeah, yeah. Because like I said, I'm a team player. So I'm there to help her as well. Yeah. Because you can have all the money in the world, the best sound equipment. I mean, she had the best sound equipment in yeah. the world. We went to Lexington, uh, Pennsylvania and rehearsed for four weeks Yeah, with the best sound equipment. But it's always something going to go. You know, it's all about what Murphy's Law when they're dealing with sound. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a little minions are in there. But anyway, <laughs> and so we became very close. And, and so she would talk to me and we we became very close. That was my girl. Olivia Newton John, she was wonderful. She paid well. She was a wonderful human being. And that's when I met Karen Carpenter, who was one of my idols too, because I studied her. I loved her alto voice, you know, mezzo soprano voice. And it was so comforting. And all of her songs that that Williams wrote. I mean, I mean, she and we're both from LA, you know? Yeah. That's how I met Karen Carpenter was through uh -huh. Olivia Newton John because she came on tour with uh -huh. her. Okay. Cool. And Julio, of course, Julio Iglesias. 
I learned so much about life in first class from Julio. Yeah. And drive, you know, flying his G5 <laughs> and, you know, just right. the best of wines and caviar, bon vivant, right? Yeah. And yeah. music and being international. And he's the sexiest man on the planet singing. It was Julio <laughs> Iglesias. But he was good. He was good people. Yeah. Good good people. He yeah. he believed in me and like Olivia believed in me and just, you know, there's a lot of good people out there. Were so, there, was, were there, um, were there mentors that you had actually? Mm -hmm. What did you say? Were, really? there, were there actual mentors that you had? Yes. Yes. David T. Walker is one of my mentors. He told everybody about me. That's what got me into doing all the sessions. Uh -huh. well, I mean, because all the stuff you hear on Barry White's album, The Guitar, that's David T. Walker uh -huh. on so much and his own albums. You know, that was one of my big mentors. And I really believed that um, um, Julio was a mentor too, because uh -huh. Julio, before I started my school, I I was going to uh, Vegas too, because that's I had left, you know, because Maurice White wanted to produce me. So Maurice White was producing me. And so he put me, he was a great mentor as well, you know, of Earth, Wind and Fire. He put me with great writers because he respected my writing ability. So um, I'm on the plane and I get to Vegas and we're having lunch, of course, great vino, great food, blah, 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 blah. It was at Caesar's Palace. And he says, he looked at me, he says, Stephanie, what are, you, what are you planning on doing for the rest of your life? I said, singing. And he said one profound thing. He says, Stephanie, with your gifts, think about something else too. Check this out. That will add on too. He says, because I'm Julio Iglesias and I'm still trying to prove to these people that I'm the still the top seller and top you know, headliner, but he says, you don't want to go through that for the rest of your life. <laughs> no, that was deep. Yeah. While I was on the plane, my friend who also wrote her name is, um, oh my God, Brenda Andrews. She was a VP over at, over at the music, um, Rondor Music, uh -huh. uh, A&M Records. Yeah. yeah. She was also on that plane and we were talking she says, Stephanie, with your gifts, because I've seen how you make up background parts right on the fly, you know, telling the different singers what to do, blah, blah, blah. She said, you should start a school of voice. Now, all of this is happening in tandem. I'm on the plane with her. I land, go to, uh, to Caesar's Palace. All this is in the same day. And then Julio said, figure out something else that you could also do. That's why the epiphany, boom. I'm starting my school of voice and artist development because the industry is going through a paradigm shift and they took a and R out of the game. Yeah. Making, I mean, indie is great because I'm an indie artist. I was on Arista records and uh, Clive Davis signed me to his label the whole nine yards. I was on Columbia, you know, however, bling, there's no more a and R. Yeah. Artists and repertoire, they're not gonna uh, uh, hone in your skills for you. They're not gonna develop you, no more artist development. Yeah, yeah. Well, so that's why I had the epiphany of starting my school of voice and artist development, Sproul House Music. And then I wrote my book, bam, 17 points to longevity in show business, staying focused on your vision, not the vision somebody else has for you, but the vision that God has put on your heart to come to fruition. That's what I'm all about. So that's why I'm paying it forward. Yeah. Still working, still doing my thing. I'm doing a major project right now, you know, and I can't speak on it because I signed an NDA, but I'll talk about it. We can have another talk about that because that's huge. So from working with Michael Jackson and everybody that I've worked with, um, it's such a blessing to pay it forward to all the students because I had a great a music teacher in school, Mr. Mastretta, and I had a Mr. Bonobo, and they were phenomenal, phenomenal. Uh -huh. 
you know, that believed in me and saw my other gifts, you know, because my mother wouldn't let me be in the choir. She wouldn't? No, she said, you already can sing. You sing at church. Uh, learn the cello. Oh. Play the instrument. Then I'm learning yeah. everything at the same time, you know, solfeggio and learning how to be a team player with all those different instruments and, and hearing all the oboe and bassoon and this and that and the violin, the viola and the, the timpanis and, uh, you know, all these instruments happening in tan gave me the opportunity to, and that facility to be able to make up parts on the fly so quickly, you know, cause I'm kind of audio didactic. It, it just happens. I'm, I hear things differently, you know, yeah. than, than most. Uh -huh. Yeah. Um, when you write, do you uh, do you write um, trying to write a hit, or what? Do you just write what you're feeling? I write what I feel. Yeah, like social commentary. You know, to me, you know, yeah. what's going on in my life. Like I said, that's good enough. Yeah. I'll good to you, uh -huh. you know, sweet control, you know, I'll be there for you. Um, so many other songs that I've written. Um, there's a song that I wrote for Oh My Brother. Oh, my brother, dear, I wish that you were here to laugh and talk is what we did best together. And my brother was passing over. Hmm. Yeah, he was making his transition. And I sang that to him. I said, Bonky, I just wrote this song. I want you to hear it. I mean, he's on his deathbed because he loved me expressing, because I was his muse. He told me what to wear, how to look, what to sing. He said, I want you to study Josephine Baker. And then I ended up playing Josephine Baker in a uh -huh. play that Mickey Stevenson wrote, you know, called Sang Sister Sang. Uh -huh. So he just put all this wonderful gifts in me and he saw it. And me, he was my first mentor, was my brother, William L. Sproul, and his nickname was Bunky. So I said, Bunky, I wrote this song, you know, Oh, My Brother. And I sang, he said, sing it for me. I sang, he said, you wrote that for me. Uh -huh. I said, and I got scared. I said, no, I didn't. He says, yes, you did. He said, that's okay, <laughs> Stephanie. It's okay, girl. Keep keep doing yourself and keep beating your face, girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> That was my brother Bonky. I love him. He's still with me. I oh yes, my brother. <laughs> yeah, so it's social commentary, you know, what I feel, what you know. That's that's me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I I was curious because I I write like that too. I, Great. I uh, yeah, I just I just write what I write and you know, sometimes I write lyrics for other people's songs and I always say, look, you know. I'm kind of ethereal in my writing and, um, you know, if you don't dig it, just tell me, or if you want to change it or go write or whatever, it's, I'm open, exactly. but I just write how I write, you know, so. Yes, yes, yes. And I think we write our personalities too. Yeah. So when you said ethereal, I see you being ethereal. Yeah. I see it. Yeah. Every time I've met you, and, and this is the first time we got a chance to really hang. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> see <you> got to <laughs> see it. That's so true. <laughs> like all these years. Huh? <laughs> That's a good thing. Everything in, in his time, you know. Yeah. All well, you're very sweet. It's, it's nice to talk to you. <laughs> Thank you, my love. Uh, let's see. Okay, here's a question um, as a singer. Hi, Wilbur. Walker, a friend of mine who had been a student of mine, and I produced his record, which was a great record, awesome. Wilbur Walker. Um, let's see. Uh, so have you ever um, studied voice? Have you ever done voice lessons yourself? Oh, you know, that's funny. I was doing a lot of work, and then I started touring. And I went to Seth Ricks as my vocal in fact he was the first vocal coach i ever had because he was the vocal teacher at the eddie canner foundation of creative oh, really? yeah oh. when i got the scholarship to the school oh wow he was over jack donner was over the music he was over the uh voice huh. so that was my first experience huh. vocal coaching but after that no yeah 
Yeah. But I learned a lot from him. He's yeah. Brilliant. Just curious. Brilliant. And what, what about your school? Uh, your school, does it teach vocal technique or? Yes, my school teaches vocal technique. It's artist development, domestic and international. In, front, in fact, one of my friends, Dan Balan, who's one of the biggest stars out of um, uh, Moldova, uh -huh. you know, the wars going on in the Ukraine. Yeah. Um, he had a major hit, Numa Numa A, that was a world hit. Um, he just hit me up. He wants to get back together. He's one of my teachers, um, one of my students. So I have a lot of students internationally in Moscow and Mexico and Korea and Japan and China. And um, I, you learn to sing any style from Bach to rock, dear heart. And then you learn the, the proper warm up exercises because a lot of people don't really know how to warm up, you know, and um, and I also, you know, in Spanish, I help them with their Spanish. And I'm a dialect coach and also a addiction coach. I have a lot of people from uh, China. And so, the, and, and like Japan, they can say L's, you know, mm -hmm. like they say, Oreo, Oreo. No, it's Julio, Julio, right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> right. So, you know, I have an affinity for languages. So, I, I know a little bit of probably 10 languages. But anyway, um, just one, maybe one word. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, the proper way to audition, yeah. whether you're singing live or you're doing a commercial, and I have a re you know a studio at my house, so they can come and they can rehearse there and, and really work and hone on their skills. And I'm a dancer as well, but I teach live uh, performances as well. And I have I have a lot of actors that come, like Sinbad. I have comedians that come to me. You know, he was doing a part in his show, so God bless his soul. Sinbad, uh, one of my students, um, and his daughter and his son. And so, and, and the most important thing is vocal maintenance. I teach them how to take care of their voices, how to take care of yourself, get your rest, drink your water, drink your ACV, your apple cider vinegar and water, take your herbs, you know, walk as much as you can, exercise, take care of, don't go to, tell my women, don't go to bed with makeup on, you know, cleanse your face. So when you're my age, you can still look fairly good. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> you know, take care of yourself, take care yeah. of yourself. Yeah, yeah. So um, I'm gonna write the name of your school in here. What, say? Yes, yeah, Squirrel House Music. And where is it? Yes, it's in Altadena. Oh. Yes, in my studio in Altadena. Oh, okay. Yeah, I learned from, like, Seth, he kept it in his studio at his home. The mine is in my studio. Oh, okay. Yeah, Altadena, yes. I love Altadena. It's so, wonderful. So nice, yeah. Many years. So at Spur House Music School of Voice and Artist Development, you can look me up on uh, www.stephaniesproul.net. Mm -hmm. Rollhousemusic.com. Yeah, and all of my handles um, Instagram, Facebook, Sproul House. I just hit Stephanie Sproul and I'll pop up. There's another Stephanie Sproul. I said, You're not Stephanie Sproul, girl. <laughs> <laughs> you're not me. So it's Sproul House. You know, you can use my email like S P R U I L H O U S. Yeah. Is, is my. Um, okay. Instagram. There's another Stephanie Spruill. Huh. When Amazing. I saw that, I said, oh, no, girl, you <laughs> You're not Stephanie Spruill. <laughs> I had a woman who had my, well, just had Kathy Siegel. Kathy Siegel Garcia is very unique, but <laughs> Kathy Siegel and, oh, I don't know, about 25 years ago, she used to get calls for me. Yeah. Yeah, okay. and um, so we became friends, and <laughs> oh, she would true. send send my you know my people over to me. Yeah, and this year I actually met a dopp doppelganger, who actually was in a house party with my stepdaughter, and she my stepdaughter was talking to her, and she called her husband over, and she said, "Who does she look like?" And she he said, "Kathy," and so I contacted her. She did look a lot like me and with the same hair and, hair and our, our, eye, our eyes and something about her mouth or something. Anyway, and she said she said <clears throat> people like would come up to her at various places thinking it was me. Um, that's, that's a good story. 
I don't have a doppelganger, but the, the girl with the Sproul House um, <laughs> the girl name is Caucasian. So, oh, oh, well, there you yeah. go. And okay. and I don't know where she lives. She's out no. of <laughs> sister from a different mother, maybe or something. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, what personally? What what are a few of your favorite? Um, well, we could say records or we could say songs, whichever you'd, you'd prefer. But just personally, yeah. like a desert island stuff, you know, that you could listen to over and over it's again. It's a lot. Yeah. No complaints and no regrets. <laughs> I still believe in chasing dreams and placing bets <laughs> because I'm not going to give up, give out or give in. So I believe in his to life. Yeah. Behind. Yeah, I was just actually listening to Shirley Horn do that last night on the way home. I was oh. playing that record, Here's to Life. And she she does all these great songs on that record and just yes. her phrasing and, you know. Exactly. Yeah, beautiful, yeah. Here's to Life, I love me some Shaka Khan. So all of the, the, the early songs from CK, because I did her Life to Savoy album. So oh. yeah, in New York, uh, Russ Titleman was the producer. So I was able to hang out with the Rufus. All the original members got together. I and went to college with uh, John Robinson. Oh, okay. Yeah, he's wonderful. <laughs> I love me some JV. Yeah. JR. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yes. So uh, it was all of CKs. Yeah, definitely yeah. Chaka Khan, man. That was, that oh, was the shit. Yeah. Um, of course, Aretha Franklin, her songs, um, Sarah Vaughn songs, because that's who yeah. I studied as a child, because that's what my mother played. And yeah. going to Thelonious Monk, I love jazz. So, you know, Round About Midnight is one of my favorites. Yeah. You know, speaking of jazz, because it's like a suite. Yeah. You know, different parts. And I did on my album, uh, A Jazz Day, and everybody can get it. Just go to Amazon. Ah. And um, yeah, jazz day. I'll put that. Jazz, yeah, Jazz Day is my album, my jazz album. I paid homage to Thelonious Monk and Bill Cunliffe. I know you know Bill Cunliffe. Yeah. And I did a tribute to uh, Thelonious Monk a oh. few years ago. Yeah, so that was amazing. I, I love. I, do you do you think we can take a like a short little clip? Listen to Jazz Day on Spotify or no? Yeah. Okay, let's, let's and just the song Jazz Day. Yeah. Okay, this song was penned by Brenda Russell. Yeah, a color purple Brenda Russell. Get here, Brenda Russell. She's a very good friend of mine. She's amazing, phenomenal She's writer. She's one of my favorite writers. Yeah. One of my favorite writers. Anyway, she told me, Stephanie, you know, other people said they wanted to record the song and you recorded it. So thank you. It's it's so cleverly done. She's a clever writer, you know, very clever. So the song, and hence, um, I, I uh, entitled my album, A Jazz Day. And that's from her single, The Jazz Day, which is on my album, my jazz, yeah. The Jazz Day, yeah. Okay, I'm looking forward. I'm looking to it, uh, hold on. Uh, let's see, here we go, all right. Any morning and a way long afternoon. It's a jazz day. It's a jazz day. Tea with the loneliness. Yellow jacket moon. It's a jazz day. It's a jazz day. Do dum do you we kicking in my way? It's a jazz day. Sand born sky, born of fire, to take me for a little ride. Sting, swing down my old sweet sorrow. Mingus this, mingus that. Joni, show me where is it?
is Bella. Simply sample that. It's a jazz day. It's a jazz day. Dizzy with ecstasy. Chilling with the cats. It's a jazz day. It's a jazz day. I mean, it's just clever. Yeah. Yeah, it was great. Very Couple nice. Of it was just brilliant. Yeah. And you sound beautiful singing like that, too, you know? I, I haven't heard you sing like that, you know? Yes, that's my jazz. That's yeah. how my jazz album is. Yeah, very lovely. Thank you. Yeah. So you'll love um, As Time Goes By or... Uh -huh. um, all the ones that I have on my jazz album. Yeah, you had a, uh, oh, let's see, um, well, Gingy is, uh, you know. Yeah, Gingy, oh, you should play Gingy. That's one of my favorites. Let's play Gingy. Is 
that no one believes stories of love belongs to you and me First time I heard it years ago, John Lucian. Oh yeah, that's right. I forgot. Yeah. Yeah. My sisters and I, I had twin sisters who were uh, four years older than me and one played piano. They both had really beautiful matching voices. So the three of us grew up singing. My dad was a sax player and my mom was a singer. So oh, okay. yeah. So, but we, that was the time when all the kind of the typical Jobim songs were coming in, you know, Girl from Ipanema, One Note Samba, Jinji, you know. <laughs> so yeah. that was, that was in our, in our bag of tricks, you know. But the, this, that song, Jinji, I always would sing it when I was in, at, in the ocean, you know. That's it's just a, a connecting, you know, song for yes, me. Very peace. And you know, um, Jobim and Olvia, though, wrote it for Salis, is an incredible uh, singer. Uh, she was uh, a bossa nova singer and um, her nickname was Jinji. Oh. And he married her, they were married and she passed over right before she was coming to America to blow up because she was huge in Brazil. But that was her name. People don't know the backstory of Jinji. That's her nickname. Oh, interesting. Um, what was I going to say about that? Um, oh, no, nothing. I was just going to tell you that my friend Rowan just made you point zero 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 one cent richer because he bought. <laughs> <laughs> he bought a jazz day. I love it. Thank you for that point. You're on Spotify. <laughs> now, um, a billion people do that. I, well, maybe. Yeah. You know, that, I heard they're actually bringing that to the Senate, actually, to make it um, 0 0.01 cents. At least. Which it should be, man. I mean, yeah. Who else is getting, who's getting the 99? Why? It should be the artist. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. Um, what do you, what do you think of the business? How, I mean, you've, you've been in uh, varying parts of the business. What do you, how do you think the business is 
looking right now? Do you, do you see it? Ha well, obviously it's changed somewhat for the worse, and, uh, but do you see it actually possibly changing for the better as well? Well, you know, when I told you in the 90s when they had the paradigm shift in yeah. the, in the uh, record companies, you know, yeah, all the A &R. record companies, yeah. they weren't taking care of the people any longer. And they said, if you come here with um, everything your tours done. and with everything and with the record done, okay, we'll be your distributor. But yeah. now, which is good, people can do it indie. Yeah. However, that's that 0.0001% that you'll receive. However, you can get out there and do it. And the internet has helped and hindered a lot of people. Yeah. The thing about the internet for artists um, that I used to pull my CDs and you two out of my trunk of my car. That's how I did it. For, that's how John Lucian heard my song, Sweet Control. I went to my trunk of my car, got my CD and gave it to him. <laughs> and the history. So you had to really hustle. Yeah. You know, yeah. The day. Now you just click 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 and the <laughs> crazy thing is tiktok if you're tiktok you do a lot of crazy things on tiktok and then you have a million fans and the company saying oh yeah she's got it going on can't sing one note yeah you know, one note samba no can't even do that <laughs> <laughs> you know, but she's a size zero and she's cute and yeah. <laughs> have great producers that give you this phenomenal track yeah yeah, but then there's those who are great, you know, and the rappers and they're doing their thing, you know, that's changed the whole game. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's it's just a like a polarity, I think, you know, it's pulling on both sides. It's good, and then there's like the negative. So I'm in the center. Hey, it is what it is. I've been here long enough to see how it's changed. Let's see what's going to happen in the future. Yeah. I know that you music is a universal language and it'll be here forever. So Kathy, you and I have selected a great business that came from our dentro su cuerpo. That's inside su alma. It's in your soul. Yeah. It's in our souls to give to the world because yeah. the world is in, you know, it's in shambles right now. And music, I think, is helping a lot of people who don't have food to eat a place to stay. They're in a war zone, in a war zone. I mean, it's crazy now. So music helps if you can listen to Jin Jing and be in some water and yeah, you know, yeah. or here's to life or whatever. Yeah, I, over the year, you know, I started this interview series the day that the pandemic went in. Yeah, and I, at the first nine months I was doing it six days a week. Okay. Yeah, and then I went down to three, and then I went down to just the archives, and now in the last few months I've been doing it once a week again. But yeah, yeah. Um, yeah I just, I, I really, I mean, I've been in music all my life, but it just really struck me, first of all, how many people across the planet do music. It's not like a little group of people. It's you know, pervasive, and also that we we as artists and also the other arts included are literally balancing the planet out. Literally, if we didn't have arts, or, you know, it would just be uh, you know a planet like the moon. You know, just be nothing. We'd blow ourselves up, which you know, I mean, it's just yeah, it's really amazing, really amazing, actually. Well, that's greed, you know. Yeah. And and power. Yeah. You know, as as a musician, we're not looking for power. We're just looking to express what God has put in us to bring forth, yeah. right? Yeah. And and that's a pure. That's the purity of it. Yeah. Now, back in the day, there were musicians that ran the companies. You know, like Herb Albert and all. Yeah. The, yeah. Now it's just CEOs. Yeah. But with the MBA and all that, bottom line is all about yeah. making making the money so yeah but hey we're still here to tell the story <laughs> girlfriend <laughs> and you know what when the last time we saw each other was at uh kenny elliott's memorial yeah we talk about um community you know and good heart and quality and beautiful music and beautiful effects i mean that was a a show of what 
it was all about, you know. You know, and as a testament to him as yeah. well. Yes. All the people saw him. Yes. And for all those drummers, which I played with because I'm a percussionist, Gatson and all oh, this one. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. You know? And then Nolan Shaheed, Cat Daddy. <laughs> Boy, he looked great that day, didn't he? He was phenomenal. Yeah. He was playing like I'd never heard him play before. Very strong. I, very strong. It was br just brilliant, you know, and I, that's the way I want to go out with music. Me too. I said, I said, I want a funeral like this one. Exactly. And that's a going home because we're joining the heavenly choir. Yeah. You know, that's what we're doing, you know. So you, we're here for a, a certain amount of time, in time, in space. And when we're all gone, music will still be here. Yeah music birds will still be chirping they're singers yeah my husband and i were going well watching we're here in santa barbara oh, cool. and we're going to hear them Ooh, they're singing olivia newton john used to love to swim with the dolphins hmm. they're singing you yeah know, god's we're all part of this collective energy and which I think is music. That's the beginning of time, music. music, yeah. music. We're blessed. Yeah, we are very much so. Um, let's see, do you, do you, uh, do you have any um, uh, books that you like to recommend um, to your students, for instance? I mean, philosophy books or philosophy of music books? But what is it, you know, like the singers, um, what was that? I had it in my book because it prompted me to write my the Singer's Secret. Is it called The Singer's? The oh. Singer's Secret. Um, who's oh, well, it by? Uh, let me see. Oh, that's what I mean. The Singer's Okay, uh, uh, the Bible, of course. Uh, yes. 17 points to longevity and show business because, no, the reason I'm saying this because I broke it down in, in wonderful, 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 um, uh, how do I say, sections. Yeah. And my first section is personal, which a lot of books don't do this. So I'm just saying, the first section is personal. It starts with confidence, focus, emotional well-being mm. cuz we got a lot of that in our industry you know how we get you know it's it's an emotional business it's a roller coaster and sure. we got to know how, learn how to work with our emotions so there's some good books having to do with emotional well-being but this emotional well-being is in my personal and then physical well-being because emotionally you can't be well if you're not doing anything physically mm -hmm. And vice versa. Yeah. My section two are my career points. Education. Like you were saying, you were an educator at Cal State. That's my husband's alum. Oh, He's, really? Yeah, that's where he got his degrees from um, uh -huh. Cal State. Yeah. LA. Education is so important. Skills. Skills. You may have skills that you don't even know you have. You know, you must bring forth versatility. We must be versatile. That's what Miss Stephanie is. I can tell you that, you guys, I'm I'm versatile. If it doesn't work, I'll try something else. Okay, if that doesn't work, I'll try something. It's all about reinventing yourself, baby, until God calls you home. And then the next is business savvy. Like I told you, I learned a lot from my mother because she was an entrepreneur, but she was a businesswoman. So I learned how to fill out and learn, how, you know, she was helping me with uh what do income tax. I said, I don't want to be an income tax consultant, right? I want to be a singer. But I learned from her doing that, how to fill out contracts, because that's how I became one of the top contractors, you know, in the country for hiring vocalists. Um, it's a business, you know, because it's you're on stage for two hours and the other 22 hours you're handling your business. Yeah. Okay, you could take that to the bank. Yeah. Okay, self-marketing. We must market ourselves. It's very important because nobody's going to do it for you. Like I told you, you know, the things that I went up, Olivia, you got to live with John Lucian. Here's my record. Check it out. And he wanted to record. Okay, networking, like what we're doing. We're keeping this network open. 
don't be afraid to network with others and industry contacts is very important. You know, when I saw you at that um, repass and I said, I would love to do your show. That was networking. And here yeah. I am today, yeah. here for today right? right, right. And the last part is financial. Uh -huh. you know, those who are making all this money and stuff and they're not using the money properly, you know, you could, uh, so it's all about financial stability, yeah. your environment, watch who you're around y'all and global awareness because we're one melting pot. It's global now and yeah. trends. They, what was last year or what was 20 years ago, what 30 years ago, bell bottom pants, honey, I still got mine from 30 years ago. Okay. It always comes back. So don't I get bet you, I bet you fit into them too. Yeah, I do. Hallelujah. <laughs> Why did I know that? <laughs> well, I have to fast. I fast and take care of myself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but there are a lot of, uh, what is it? The um, something sees America. Anyway, there are a lot of, you guys have Google now, Google, whatever you want to address, Google it and it will bring up a real good book. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, and I was just reading a prequel of Rachel Maddow's book. Oh, and oh, then, really? oh my goodness. Ooh, amazing. Oh, but that's not for singers. That's just social comedy <laughs> going on in the world. Lord, there's I'm been so many good books. I, I read the uh, Kennedy book on uh, Dr. Fauci. Wow, that was. I, I read that during the pandemic. I was like, wow, this is pretty intense, man. Yeah, pretty well, intense. he's a non-vaxxer, so. I... Yeah, but Dr. Fauci was not cool. So, I don't know. I don't I'm, know. I'm telling you, read that book. You, and it's not just his opinion. It's actually facts. Um, but uh, so let's see. Um, uh, you've been... Yeah. So what about your acting? So has your acting, has that been a big part of your career? You know, the acting, you know, I had an agent, I went out for auditions and I cannot stand that. Really? Call back after call, but oh, you want oh, Stephanie yeah, yeah, yeah. and I'll be there. You yeah. want my character, I'll be, uh, because I was working so much. I, I've been blessed to, you know, have had a great career you know, as a singer and a background singer. So, and with my school, so acting, I do, you know, yeah, yeah. really do, you know, my sister and me would, like I said, Maddie Carruthers, it was, it's a great piece and she's reissuing it. So you can get it on uh, YouTube. You if, look great like, on, on film. I mean, were you in other movies or TV? And stuff? Yeah. Um, American Hot Wax. Oh, classic! Have that. Let, there we go. With Jay Leno. When I did the Jay Leno show, he said, "You remember we were in American Hawaii? I said, Yeah, baby. Look at you now. Look at us. You know, we're doing it. You know. So now, oh, now American Hot Wax. Uh, I have up here. Belief. Music, belief, you know, like the Twilight Zone kind of movie TV show. Um, quite a few shows that I've done. Yeah. Yeah, you can see me in Beyond Belief, and then you can see me in yeah, American Hot Wax, that part of American Hot, Singing Maybe. You know, I have to admit, I don't know what American Hot Wax is. Oh, it's a classic. It's a classic. It's a movie. It's a, it's, yes, and it's about um, Alan Freed. He was the first oh. DJ to play Black music. Oh, he was the one that broke. That's why Little Rich was on this. Um, uh, dun, 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 um, oh God, Brooklyn Dreams, uh, the Delights, which we play. Me, Brenda Russell, and uh, somebody else was in the group. Um, um, Screaming Jay Hawkins, you know, I put a spell on you. He yeah. was in it. Um, dun, 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 um, Chuck Berry. I'm, I was around all of those cats. So it was the top, the creme de la creme of wow. the cats in the 50s. Jerry Lee Lewis was in it. Um, oh, and I mean, I was so many incredible artists was in that movie. So it's about Alan Free. Wow. And I, in my segment, I sang maybe. And at the end, as I walk off, Alan Free, I put my hand, I kiss my hand. <laughs> But it wasn't the real Alan Freed, okay? Uh, he, Debbie, Debbie Cornell said, said happy feet. 
Oh, it's, it's uh, yeah, Happy Feet. I did a lot uh -huh. of music in Happy Feet. I did a lot of movies, you know, um, uh, voice in a lot of movies, um, the soundtracks. Right, right. Or a lot of movies. Um, yeah. <laughs> Uh, let's see. What haven't we talked about? Um, uh, oh, yeah. Uh, what I did with, uh, what's his name? Uh, David Bowie. Yeah. In Inglorious Bastards, that movie, the song that I did with him um, played because I, I did it back in the day in the 70s with David Bowie. And then they put it in the movie Inglorious Bastards, um, burning down oh. fire with gasoline. David Bowie. That yeah, was, oh, he was amazing. Oh, I mean, I, to me, that's like one of the, these superstars as well, you know. Yes, yes, yes. Giorgio Moroder, I was able to do so many um, gigs with so many top people, you know, being with Keith Forsey, you know, that's that Giorgio Moroder and Keith Forsey team. Uh, that's who I would, Billy Idol uh, would uh, call me to do his uh, records. You know, he called me Hellfire Choir. He has me in his book. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, fast. Who, who are who are some of your favorite uh, singers to sing background with? Oh, of course, Donna Summer, Gloria Gaynor. No, um, I mean, I mean, in the background, in the backup singers, like, and they what, were with me. Yeah, like who in your backup backup singers did you really like to sing with? Oh, sing with. Well, yeah, I would call all the time. I'd call the Waters Girls. You know, Max oh Max yeah. Girls. Yeah. yeah, Alex Lewis, uh, Alex Brown, Maxine, Maxine yeah. Lewis. Yes. Um, Maxanne, you know, the group she had, Maxanne. Um, I would call, um, you know, Jim Gilstrap. Uh -huh. A lot of work together, a tons of work together. Um, there's so many really good, you know, Alfie Silas, she's good. Um, so many good background. Bonnie Bramley, Gloria Jones, baby. Oh, <laughs> she was my mentor with background. She taught me how to really work it. Yeah. And, uh, Billy Barnum. That was my girl. God rest her soul. Billy Barnum and Ann White, because we were with Glenn Campbell, toured the world together. We were Rhinestone Cowgirls together and Southern Knights and stuff, you know. <laughs> so, um, And singing with Glenn Campbell, because he was a great singer. Oh yeah. my goodness, you know, and he loved Bee Gees, you know. So a lot of the artists I would do Bee Gees with, you yeah. know, sing with. Mm. Uh, cool. Yeah. Or Shaka you... Khan, singing with Shaka Khan, singing back around with her. It's like, oh, MG. And with Aretha Franklin, oh, this is the only time I felt scared <laughs> is when I did the uh, song. What's the name of the song? Oh, Robin, you got to hit me up because. I'm going blank. Um, it was on her uh, awesome album that Luther Vandross uh, produced. Um, and um, she was standing here, Sissy Houston here, and Darlene Love here. And we were singing our hearts out on that record. I, it was just great. And I was like, oh, I'm singing with Aretha Franklin. I'm singing background with Aretha Franklin. <laughs> so that was one to have Sissy Houston, the best soprano. That's Whitney Houston's mom. OK, yeah. I sang for Whitney Houston. You know, I did the uh, Oscars several times um, and the Grammy Awards shows uh, several times. And Irene Cara told people, Stephanie Spruill is here. Blah, blah, blah. You know, when I did flash dance with her because she won an Academy Award and an um, Grammy for flash dance and she wrote it yeah yeah god rest her soul yeah but singing you know on that song with aretha franklin and sissy houston and darling love that was that was the group that sounds that amazing yeah, yeah that was i was that had the opportunity to sing with them yeah that is the creme de la creme <laughs> what did you think about um the movie um 20 20 feet to stardom it was cool. I wasn't in it. Yeah. But that's, 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 that's another, another story. Yeah. Yeah. But it, it was cool. Yeah. I thought it was, you know, great that, that, uh, and it won an Academy Award. Yeah. Oh, I thought it was great. Yeah. It, it, was great. It, it was great. Yeah. It was great. It was great. It was great. That's what I'm not. I ain't hating. It yeah, was great. Yeah. 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 Some things were left out. A lot was left out, I'm but sure. it, it was, you know, it was, it was it was good 
Those yeah. Are. Yeah. I know that feeling, actually. <laughs> I, I've we'll been left out of a few we'll things that I shouldn't. But anyway, whatever. Um, exactly, whatever. You know, yeah. like I said, there's a game out there. Yeah. And I don't play it. Yeah. I don't play the game. Yeah. I stay in the loop. And that's all I can do. You know, and anyway, when I was very young, I, I mean, a young in my 20s, I, uh, I learned, I had an epiphany that competition was absolutely nothing. And whatever, <clears throat> whatever your path in life is, okay. that is what okay. happens to you. Yeah. And it's. So if your friend got something that you should have gotten or you wanted to get, it, right. there's no sense in feeling bad at all, you know. Exactly. I agree. It's your path and that's their path, you know. I agree. I agree 100%. <laughs> yeah. And sometimes there's, in this industry, there's sabotage. Yes. Backstabbing. And yes. there's a whole lot of things. We can talk about the beauty of the business, but there is a dark side of the business too. Yeah. That's why you got to stay focused on your vision because it could take you somewhere else. Yes. You know, you get caught up in all that, oh, are they sabotaging me? Are they do, 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 do. And they might be. <laughs> right. And and how are you going to come out of it and still smell like a rose? That's, that's the whole point. Actually. That's the whole point. Yeah. That's why I tell my young artists, you guys stay in there. Don't give up. Don't give out. Don't give in. But don't buy into the hype. Yeah. Just stay in your lane and do the best you can with what you have. Yeah. And continue to hone in on your skills. You know, keep, but don't compete. It's not worth it. It's not. It's not worth it. Yeah. And, and if something happens, you get up, you brush it off, and you stand. What was it Donnie McClurk, right? He says, stand. <laughs> you don't feel like you can, but stand. <laughs> right. Anyway, it's good fodder for, for compositions, right? <laughs> yes. Ex Exactamente. That's what I said. It's good enough. <laughs> One time I actually fucked over uh, a, a friend of mine and I, I don't feel like I really meant to. But I did, and it was one of those actions that I wished I could take back, and I couldn't. Yes. And yes. Um, I was driving down to Long Beach to see her, and this song came to me that's one of my favorite songs that I wrote. Okay. So, you know, it's it's all it's all fodder, you know? It's just life. Yes. It's, yes. You know, it's life. Meditation gurus tell it to you all the time. Be the witness. Be the observer, you know? And yes. good, bad, it's all it's all here. It's, it's not part of it. Yeah, it's not not like uh, uh, I wish I had all good. No, it's just no, everything no. is a lesson, you know. Yeah, and and if you're not tested, you don't have a testimony. Yeah. So that's how we come out of it. Like like I say in my book, are you and I can, I will, or an I must person. Yeah. I can to me means I can do this, I can do that, but I don't know how to make it come to fruition. Yeah. I will. I will get around to doing it one day. You know, the kids, did you clean your room? I will. Most I wills are procrastinators. Uh -huh. However, and I must person, like you and I, we must proactively pursue my master plan on a daily basis. And I'm going to repeat that. Um, you know, you got to, you must pursue, actively pursue your master plan. It's a plan. Yeah. Master plan that God gives us. And then there's a plan that you're writing out for yourself that you probably journal, say, this is what I want to come to fruition. And that works. You know, whether you have a uh, what they call a vision board or whatever. I have one. I don't do put nothing on. <laughs> you know, I have it up there and I put stuff on there. My Sh Shawana, I got from her, you know, put them up there. But, you know, whatever you use to to make yourself go forward, use it and, and just be grateful. Yeah. Grateful daily, grateful, like you said, meditation and prayer. Be yeah. grateful because we only have a short time on this earth. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, you said that something's brewing for you, but anything else that's uh, coming up next? Yeah, well, I'm going to re-release -re Sweet Control. 
Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, that's everybody loves that song. Uh, everybody. I mean, even the kids. I said, I said, what did you like about the show? One of the artists came to see me, uh, my last show, and he said, you know, my favorite song was the song you wrote, "Sweet Control." And I said, okay, I'm re-releasing that bad boy. <laughs> oh, look out for "Sweet Control." Okay. Cool. Yeah. yeah. And, and, you know, if you guys need me, I'm here, Stephanie Sproul. And um, you can get hit me up, sprawlhouse at AOL.com or sprawlhousemusic.com. Stephanie Sproul, Facebook, you know, my handles. Yeah. I want to see a little bit of you live at the Rose. Okay. Okay. This, so the Rose, was this done a long time ago? Yeah, right before the rose closed. Yeah, that was such. That was a. That, that was, was a great a hang. Great hang. Yeah. Saw Gino Vanelli there. I saw so many artists there. I said, "Oh yeah, yeah. I want to take on that stage." Yeah, beautiful stage. Okay, so here's a little bit. Uh, it's it goes 25 minutes, so we won't do that. But we'll start right. a little bit. Yeah. When your love even to handle man <laughs> okay there's all out of sync you saw the intention <laughs> there. Oh, I mean, solar eclipse is take making everything out of sync i guess so oh, good. <laughs> but you got the intention yeah we got the intention yeah, yeah so <clears throat> um yeah well we're coming to an end believe it or not it's been two hours Wow, this was a quick hang. Yeah, how time flies, right? I know, I know. <laughs> well, have a great time in Santa Barbara. 
Yes. And um, say hi to your husband for me. I and will. Just happy birthday to you both. <laughs> you, yeah, his birthday is next week. I think yeah, next week. Yeah. Cool. Very cool. Yes. Thank you, my baby. And so good to hang with Kathy Siegel Garcia. Sí. Gracias. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Bye, hon. Okay, ciao. Ciao. Bye. <laughs> All right. I'm I'm getting ready to hang up. Okay. Hey, hang up. Bye. Bye.